Welcome back to the Tinkerage. I first started getting back into making and discovered the maker community and discovered podcasts. One of the first podcasts uh, that I came across was one called Reclaimed Audio. I'll put a link down below so if you're interested you can have a look at it. Uh, it's usually just uh, three people chatting, William Lutz, Phil Pinsky and Tim Sway. All three of them have got some really good YouTube channels. I really like the work of, of Tim Sway. He uses a lot of reclaimed materials and produce some excellent design work and the, the, I'll let you explore his channel and his Instagram feed uh, and his own website as well. Now he mostly uses reclaimed materials but recently he started designing some tools. They're rather nice. The one he's come up with, I don't know if you can see that on here, but I'll post a link underneath you can't, is something called the square. Well square, square, I'm not exactly sure how to say it. It's a square which has got lots of other uses as well. Um, if I've made a list of the uses, you can use it as a card scraper, a compass, uh, for drawing radius curves. You can use it as an awl, a square, obviously, uh, a protractor, a ruler, for cutting dowels, and as a marking gauge. Now, it's a really nice piece of kit. It's made from laser cut steel, and it's available in Imperial and in Metric. I use a bit of both. Not sure which one I should buy. But that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I just had to buy a new car. So buying one of these isn't something that's going to happen for quite a long time. And I thought, well, Tim Sway is really into recycling and reclaiming. So why should I buy his square, however great it is, when I can make my own out of reclaimed materials? So I've had a look around the Tinkerage, found a few things, and I'm going to make my own version. And I think it's going to be rather good. Now I'm going to set the camera up and uh, I've got some of the bits together already uh, but I'm going to just going to set it up and, and put the things together so that you can follow along as well if you if you want to do the same thing and then we can compare at the end. I'll put a link down to Tim's square down below and, and the videos about it. It's up to you then to compare what you think and which one you'd prefer. Your own DIY version or his swanky stainless steel laser cut rather smart version. Obviously it's a square so I've, I've got myself a a square and I think this will be quite good for the base and also as a compass now I've got a couple of options here and I'm not quite sure which one to go for I've got this rather nice uh, drafting compass uh, or I've got this more sort of standard geometry compass that found in most sort of uh, geometry cases for, for school or I've got this rather nifty piece of plastic which I've had for uh, well probably well over 20 years now uh, which has a kind of a compass function and you can slide it back and forth and it's got a scale on it as well but I think I like the idea of having a, a sharpenable pencil uh, actually attached to this uh, so I've got my compass uh, for drawing radius curves I think uh, probably best to make use of some washers so we'll have a variety of uh, different size washers so that we've got some different radius curves three different sizes, I think that's probably sufficient uh, it's an awl, so I've got this awl uh, this is uh, one I actually had when I was a boy it had to be repaired a couple of times uh, it came with a kit, a variety of uh, screwdrivers with this little additional handle that would go onto it it served me for many years until uh, I inherited a much nicer one uh, I've got the square card scraper I don't actually have a, a proper cabinet card scraper, but I've got this paint scraper. So, again, being a few years old, it's, it's fairly straight, so I think it would be quite good as a card scraper, and I have used it for scraping wood occasionally. Uh, protractor. Oh, I've got my protractor here, and obviously I've got uh, 45... It's a 45 degree square. I haven't got a 30 degree square, so 45 will have to do, and we'll have to use that. Uh, a ruler, well there's a ruler on the edge of the square and dowel cutting, well each of these has some holes in it, different sizes, so three different sizes, so I think that would be right, and then a marking gauge so I've got a marking gauge here, it's a, well, it's a fairly cheap plastic one again it's in metric and in imperial now, Tim's square is only metric or imperial, so I think that gives me a slight advantage there. Uh, I've 
I actually got this old ruler. Actually, I know I've got the ruler there, but I did dig out this old ruler, which also could be used as a scraper. Although I like the fact that that's got a bit of a handle on it. And, well, I think, yeah, maybe I should add a fork as well. So now all I've got to do is just link uh, this lot together. My wife has borrowed the hot glue gun and it's so cold in the tinkerage I've had to take all the super glue out and my epoxy out. So I think that means I'm going to have to use electrical tape unless I can find some double-sided tape. Double-sided tape. Let's have a look if I've got any double-sided tape. Oh, I do have some double-sided tape. Right, I've got some double-sided tape here, so I think that should be sufficient to hold all that together. Uh, I might use some electrical tape to reinforce it in places. So partly here now we've got to think about how we're going to attach all these things. I know I could use the point of the compass instead of the awl, but I think I like the fact that that's just a little bit longer and might be useful. Now obviously I want to keep uh, these edges clear if possible. Uh, so I think if we start, let's start by securing. If I make the ruler on one side and the scraper on the other, that will actually give me two different card scrapers. And possibly actually if I turn that the other way around, then that's going to give me a profile scraper. There, It's a semicircular, so I'll give you a profile scraper. I think this double-sided tape may have had it. Right, I want to get this aligned, so I'm going to make sure it's nice and flat and square. Right, so scraper, ruler and square, now in one. I think protractor, I think obviously we'll need to go over this side so we can actually access the numbers. May put it up this side so that you can access sort of 0 to 100. There we go, so we've got the protractor. The square is still intact. We've got the scrapers down at the side. Now let's think about these radius curves and dowel cutters. So there's the first one. Now I'm just using some duck double-sided tape. I think it's carpet tape. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. I'm sure it's not as good as some of the uh, 3M tape that if you guys have been making scooters from lately on YouTube. So three radius curves, three dowel cutters. Now I need to be careful. I need this compass to poke out slightly, but I don't want it to interfere with the square too much because I want to be able to use uh, the rule here to actually set the scale. So I'm going to need some flexibility uh, on that. I think I may there use just uh, some electrical tape to hold that in place. Don't want to obscure the, uh, the scale there. Uh, so obviously just set that back in a little bit uh, and then that can be just adjusted slightly uh, if we need to set so some flexibility there. So, just got uh, the fork and the Bradley, the, the Braddle, uh, I tend to call my Braddles Bradley um, for fairly obvious reasons, uh, and the, the marking gauge. Now the marking gauge has got uh, a bit of a chamfer on it, uh, so I think that might actually make that quite good for uh, attaching there. So I'm going to use Again, some electrical tape. So marking gauge is attached. Um, I think don't think it'll get in the way too much uh, when you're using the square. You can still uh, it's a flexible square, so you can still lay it down flat. Uh, I think the the bradle, the the awl. I think we need to kind of have that going on this side. Uh, but I've got a problem there that would obscure the center point of the protractor. So, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll... Okay, so I lost some of the footage there. Uh, 
and I'm not going to go back and recreate it. It's just too, yeah, it's held together just too well for that. Uh, so we have uh, the square uh, onto which I've used double sided tape uh, to secure this rule metric and imperial. Uh, one up on you, Tim. Uh, I've got a scraper there and attached to the back. Uh, I've got three of these washers which give me dowel cutting and radius curve. Uh, across here I've got the, the awl um, and you can barely tell that's been attached there with electrical tape. Now uh, we've got our marking gauge and then we've got our compass, protractor uh, and there's even a pencil so we can actually adjust that pencil out and, and do some drawing. So and another one up on Tim. So if you want to reclaim some materials and make yourself a reclaimed version of Tim Sway's square, uh, that's you know, how you can do it. Uh, if you'd like something in stainless steel, maybe just in metric or imperial, then you can also go to timsway.net uh, and order one from there. I'm sure this is going to be very, very useful and raise the standard of my work uh, considerably. Thank you for watching Tales from the Tinkerage. If you like what I've been doing, please do subscribe, uh, please click like, please share, and please come back for more. Thank you very much.